All right, welcome back to another exercise for MasterCam Multi-Access Beginners Edition. And this is gonna be exercise number three. Now in this video, I'll just be going over what I'll be doing and what I'll be teaching you in this chapter. So real quick, we'll go over our finished part. This is my finished part opened in MasterCam Simulation so I can show you guys what you will end up with at the end of this video tutorial chapter, okay? Now, as you can see, I have another cylinder and this will be the last cylinder that I create. Um, I really created these three first three chapters to really show you all about access substitution and all the different methods you can use access substitution to create different geometry, different toolpath, and different types of machining. Now, as you can see here, I have slots that I'm machining on the surfaces of the cylinder and I have that slot all around my part. I believe I have it eight times around my part. So we're gonna learn how to set that up and machine it. That's gonna be six times uh, the slot all the way around. We're only gonna create it once, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to transform, rotate the machining all around the part. And also, last but not least, we're going to use geometry to guide machine the left-hand side of the cylinder that you see over here. Now, if I place this into my front view, you're going to notice real quick, I'm going to zoom in. You're going to notice that this part is machined at an angle and it moves further into the part uh, as it's machining all around my part. So I'm going to show you guys how to set that up and machine it as well. Now, what I'm going to be doing is actually starting out with the geometry pre-created. It's not a very difficult geometry to create for this and you can really use any shape geometry to machine this part right here but i'm going to get started with you guys with the geometry pre-created and i will go over the geometry right now all right so i opened up my geometry and this is going to be the geometry already created for you for exercise number three now let me rotate this so i can show it to you a little bit better this is very easy geometry to create all i'm doing is created a circle over here and I created a circle over here offset from the circle okay if I place this onto the right side view you will see those two circles are actually over each other now if I place this into the top view you will also notice a geometry that's starting right in the middle of the origin over here it's lined up with the origin and it's got this shape that it has right here so this is the geometry that I will be using to guide my toolpath for whenever I machine the left hand side of the part and all I really need for creating a slot is this line that I have created over here, okay? Now, real quick, I'm going to place this into the top view again. And one thing you need to know when you create any kind of shape that you create that you want to wrap over uh, or around a cylinder, for example, this circle or cylinder is four inches in diameter, okay? So you need to know the parameter of that circle prior to creating any shape that you want from the center of the circle on out to use as your toolpath guide to machining around your cylinder. So you need to find the parameter. The parameter of any circle is two times the radius times pi. Now, obviously we know pi is 3.1416. And if you multiply that by the radius of the circle, which would be two, a radius is half of the diameter. So two times two times 3.14, uh, it comes out to 12.57, okay? So I'm going to place this into my top view again. And what I'm going to show you is real quick, just take a line, start it from right here, and end it right on this line right here, okay? So I'm gonna end it right there. And look at the length of that line. It's 12.56, that's rounded down. So 12.56, from here to here, I know for a fact that covers my entire parameter of the circle. Now you might ask, well, then why do you have it extended a little bit more? And that's a very good question. And also the reason for that is because I want my tool to exceed that. Okay. So whenever I'm machining and I'm guiding it on that tool path, I created this a little bit further, but as you can also see, it keeps going. That curve keeps going for uh, like it's, I'm going to move this down a little bit. So it keeps going as it's going into this section again. Okay, so it's almost like it's going from here to here, for example, uh, again from the bottom side. So um, you can create any shape that you have. That's why I didn't really put any dimensions or give you any drawings for this because you can create anything that you want 
um, I want you guys to be uh, very familiar with creating geometry. This is very easy to create. So if you don't know how to create shapes like that, it doesn't matter what dimensions are or what big radius this is. If you just know how to create something like that, go ahead and create it. If you do not, please look at the 2D mill DVD that we have or the 3D advanced mill and that will show you how to create geometry. Uh, you should know how to create geometry prior to using multi-axis. Okay, so I'm going to press escape real quick and go ahead and delete this line. So again, uh, the only reason I kept this line over here is because I want to show you guys that it actually from this line to this line is the parameter of my entire part. Okay, now I accidentally actually deleted my line with the circle. So I'm going to control Z and just select the line and hit delete button. Control Z just undoes whatever you've done last. And remember, we also have a line that is right here, and it's also on top of that surface as well. Now, if I place this into my right side view, you'll notice that you can't see that line uh, because it is lined up with the radius or the circle over here, okay? And last but not least, one more time to the top view, I have a dot right here. Now, this dot is going to point out my starting point of the machining. You'll see what I mean when I, I create the machining operation this point right here now also if i draw a line from this point to this point right here that is 0.6 so that means I, all i really wanted all i cared about is creating a point that is greater than 0.5 in length and the reason for that is because i want to make sure that my tool starts out uh towards the you know digs in towards the inside a little bit further away from the wall and my tool diameter is going to be one inch which means the radius is going to be half an inch, uh, which this means it clears it out for me. So when my tool comes in, it comes in a little bit away from the wall and then it starts machining. And you'll see what I mean when I start the machining operation for that and tell it that I want to start right here. That's my starting point. That's why I created a point and I placed it 0.6 away from my wall. Okay, so I'm going to hit escape, make sure to delete this. All right, and then we will start by setting up exercise number three in the next video.